In the last episode of Plant Went On Me, Kristen and Ivan of Tula Shop shared the ins and outs of running a plant shop as partners in business and partners in life. But in this episode, Kristen and Liam, head manager and plant buyer at Tula Shop, will share their favorite plant picks for the season. We're going to see some of your favorite plants today. Yep, some of my favorite arid plants. So I'm going to start with the um, Euphorbia lactea, the white ghost. So this plant, the sort of like the backstory for me, because what I love about plants is that everybody has their own like relationship and story with a plant. And this one for me, w when I first started Tula, the... Um, these were not available for sale. And there's this one greenhouse that I frequent and they had this mother plant, right? And they would never sell me any cuttings. But one day, this teeny tiny cutting, like maybe a little bit bigger than this, mm -hmm. came off the mother. And the grower was like, you could take it, Kristen. And I was like, awesome, okay, thank you so much. And so that was probably seven years ago from the start of this little, like, tiny cutting, my white ghost is now, like, this big. <laughs> Which isn't actually that big because they grow super, super fast. Right. But in our apartment, of course, it's limited. So a part of the reason I love the white ghost is because it's, it's taken such an effort for me to, like, get it and then now grow it. And, of course, now it's available, but I still hold it really, really true. Speaking more technically about the white ghost, why it's so cool, is it lacks the chlorophyll to be green, which I think is pretty wild. So it's basically like an albino plant. Um, anybody with a lot of light can grow these really easily and they grow very fast if you want them to just feed them and water them, you know, ac you know, according to the sort of environment that you have. So that's one of my favorites. I have the backstory to it, I have the personal connection to it and I love watching it grow. Now sometimes they do revert back to like green. Yep. Would you be the type of person where you're like, okay, I'm leaving that green piece on or would you actually cut it off? I would leave it. Okay. Because I, I love to see what a plant just does naturally. I, I like just to see what nature does. And then, and then what's gonna happen, right? Like after that green, Except with crested formations, if I have a crested cactus at home and it starts growing a non-crested yeah. arm. Like show a crested cactus here. So, so a crested would be like yep. the Martillo cactus crested. So this one's almost like uncrusting in a way. It sort is. Sort of. Sort of, but you have you that. You still have a little bit on top. Which is a very natural progression yeah. to my second favorite plant. Thank you, Summer Oh, Rain. yeah, you're welcome. I, <laughs> <laughs> Mertillo cactus G. metrosans was the first, again, another personal connection, was the first botanical name of a plant that I learned, thanks to Richard, again. Um, and, and, and I love saying it, Mertillo cactus G. metrosans. It's just like a fun plant name to say. And then you feel sort of good about yourself because you can say this like really long plant name. Why I love it. I love the crested formation. I love crested as well. I'm with you. You know, like you never know what you're going to get. Every single plant is different, just like all plants, but very much so in any sort of monstrous, you know, crested plant. Also, I have a cutting of a, of a plant that was a, like a personal story that I've grown as well. So I'm watching that grow from this tiny little cutting um, at home. So that's my second favorite. And these plants tend to crest often. Yeah, I mean, if they have the mutated cells, they will crest. And like we were just saying, if you get a piece, which we actually have it in the window, but it's hard to film there. There is a, there is a crested Mertillo in the window, in our west window that's pushed out a non-crested arm that, you know, I haven't cut because it's so beautiful. <laughs> but if it were mine at home, I would have cut it. Right. So that the... And the reason that you cut it is so that the energy is forced into the crested, so it continues cresting. So another of my favorite is the spiralis. Um, and we're, you know, the, the Sirius um, Farbesii spiralis is sort of like a Tula House namesake. It, you know, we've, we've been carrying this plant for a long time. Um, it's another one of those plants that you can't believe actually does this naturally, mm -hmm. just like the Mertillo cactus and just like the white ghost. These are all naturally occurring colors and shapes. 
And I think it's fascinating that nature created something to spiral. <laughs> like, what? It's, I mean, I, I know we see that in all its forms, like snails and, and seashells, but in a plant, you just don't really expect to see that. Right. So, and these are also very easy to grow in the right light with the right feeding. Um, they grow very fast and, and large if you want them to. How old do you think this one is, do you surmise? I think it's probably, let's see, because I know where it came from. I would say it might be two to three years old. Um, but it could have also, um, I don't know what the roots of this particular one look like. It could have been a cutting off of a mother because these are really easy to propagate. But you know it has a good root system because it's beautiful. So, and then I'll do one more. That's four. I should leave some for my other team to talk about, but once <laughs> I get going. <laughs> um, one more is the Milo cactus metanensis. Um, these are um, native to Cuba, so I love them because my husband is Cuban. <laughs> to love this. Um, <laughs> they're also called the bishop's, bishop's cap. And this is this, this thing called, um, um, let me make sure I say this correctly, cephalium. So as this cactus gets older, the cephalium grows. And this is actually where the flower and the fruit come. And the flower and fruit do not come onto the body of the cactus. Yeah, and the flowers the kind of go around. Yeah, like a, like a crown. Yeah, yeah. And you can eat the fruit. They're like these little fuchsia colored berries. Um, so a beautiful cactus and really cool to watch it grow because this guy just, and so you can tell how old a Milo cactus is uh, according to the size and the height of its um, cephalium. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, and the, the spines are pretty gnarly. That's pretty You don't want to get caught on one of those. But so cool also how cacti have evolved to protect themselves, right? So. You, can, you know that this cactus comes from a very drought tolerant environment because of how intense its spines are. It has evolved to protect itself from predators eating its basically body and taking the water from its basically storage of water, which is what you know, the bottom of that cactus is. Two of my other favorites right now um, so this is the Alocasia cupria. I mean, it sort of like goes without saying, look at that color. <laughs> the color, and I always say, it looks like a six pack abs right there. That's what my abs used to look like, like. It is like a superhero <laughs> like costume. Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, it, yeah, to me, it looks like a shield. So we're both going like superhero on yeah. this. And, um, and the Alocasia dragon's breath. So what I love about Alocasia and this, I used to, I had an alocasia at home, a regal shield for years. And the trick that I learned with alocasia and growing them is I like to actually let them dry out between waterings, but it's like that perfect balance because you can't leave them dry for too long. But when you do and you grow them like over time, you start to see this really beautiful sort of wodaceous stem. And it's very natural for the bottom leaves of alocasia to die off. So what you do is you, you cut them and then you sort of let the sheath, that piece of the sheath that's still there dry out and you peel it off and you start to um, expose this woody stem. They're quite tuberous, right? Yeah, yeah. they are. And, and most of them actually grow on the edges of riverbeds where there's like this um, you know, influx of water and then there'll be like this heavy drought and then this influx of water and this heavy drought. So if you think about it that way and how you grow them and water them, it makes sense. Um, so these two are, um, these are, and everything that actually I've talked about it, are online also on our e-commerce site. So these are also online. And this is one of those plants that uh, early on you could get pretty easily and then it went jack up in price. It yes. was very hard to come by and now you see them on the market again. Now you see them on the market again, which is a lot of actually also what I've talked about, like the spiralis, the Martello cactus, geometrizans. These two alocasia were really hard to come by and now there's a lot more um, growers and tissue cultivation that, that are coming into the market, which is really cool because then we can price them 
better. Yeah, and I remember when I went out to Thailand and Singapore, which mm. was quite a while ago now, and I saw all of these different cultivated varieties, and I was like, wow, yeah. that hadn't hit the U.S. market yet. It oh, took man. about two to three years for these to kind of come, come through, but now there's way more cultivated varieties than what I had even seen out in Asia, which is nice. Yeah. Thank you so much for featuring those, because you know what, it can't all be about succulents, even though they're your favorites. No, I know, it can't. <laughs> but, but again, sort of, I treat these as succulents because like the way that they grow their stem, you know, sculptural plants are my favorite, so. Sculptural plants. Amazing, thank you. Liam. Hello. Tell me a little bit about yourself because you're going to show us your favorite plants pretty soon. Oh, so I'm Liam. I'm the shop manager and plant buyer here at Tula House. So I am here to teach you guys all about what I know about plants, make you comfortable with plants because they're not intimidating. They're here to live with us and we're here to live with the art and the beauty of them. I love it. So you have two favorites, which I know is yes, really hard to I pick, have but... Yeah, you were decisive. Are. You were decisive. I was pretty decisive because <laughs> I go through waves of what I'm obsessed with, and these are two that I love right now. This is a Brazilian codex. It's the Seningia bulata. What I love about these is their furry leaves. I love that they look like a little donut, and they have the cutest little red trumpet-looking flowers. And mine at home is blooming right now, so they're good winter bloomers. It almost looks like um, one of those dinosaur kale plants, you yes. know what I mean? The type of texture. You know what? A kale is a good balance with the sweetness of the donut. <laughs> <laughs> so my second favorite right now, I love euphorbias. It's a, it's a genus that has so many different species. It's such a wide variety. And this one, it's from Eastern Africa. It's the euphorbia pisidermis. It's also known as the fish skin euphorbia. Um, I love its reflective nature. So I have it under a grow light at home and it just is always sparkling. I love that. And it's a clumping euphorbia. So for us city dwellers, this is gonna stay pretty small and it'll just clump around. And so easy care and it's beautiful. I love, like when you said fish skin, I think or fish, fish scale, because scale. it says fish, fish scale because pissa is right yeah, fish and exactly. dermis is skin exactly. you know so it's a it's very telling of the scientific name is very telling of what it actually is mm -hmm. commonly called which is pretty cool always gives you a little insight and i always love when you get a different family name with the same species and then you could kind of see the similarities like i'm thinking there's over here like a chrysula and a Kalanchoe aborescent, so two different um, families. It's amazing. If we want to stick to Euphorbia, one of my current favorites is the Rhodesia zebra. It has such a unique patterning down the flesh of the plant, and these are really cool. Oh, and you know what? I have one other Euphorbia that's yeah. even better. Yeah. This one's the Abdel Curry. Oh yeah, thank you for featuring this because yes. this is one of my favorites. <laughs> you know, I, I, am, I love these for so many reasons. Um, plants, you know, they grow in so many ranges, but this one, it's unique because it grows only on the island of Abdel Curry, which is right off of Yemen. Um, and then you get this beautiful silver color. And what's really unique is Euphorbia, it has this toxic sap inside. So you have to be careful, you know, they'll burn you. <laughs> but this one, it's, it's this neon yellow, so it gives you this very alien feeling, just combined with like the texture and the color. It's pretty amazing. And this one, it's branching. When, this, when we got this one, we were screaming. So um, someone come get it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those are some of my favorites. I love just bringing in new arids and um, they're, they're so unique. So, you know, I could, I could just list them all. They're like picking your favorite kid. All right, you got uh, two more favorites coming up here. Yes, I have two more of my personal favorites. You know, I'm more of a tropical grower at home. I have very indirect light, so these are really easy to grow for me and for a lot of us here in the city. I'll start with this one. This one's an Anthurium vitarifolium. It looks like you get two for the price yes, of one here. <laughs> all of the baskets actually do have two. I have smaller ones too if you want to start small. But these leaves, they're incredible. They get so long. They almost don't even look like hardened off yet. You know no, what I mean? Yeah, they're very delicate, actually. Mm. They can um, snap really easily. So we try not to ship these. 
but they get a really nice curvature to the leaves. And like I said, I think mine at home is maybe two feet long already and it just gets indirect light super easy. And just like the alocasias Kristen was talking about, Anthurium love to dry out in between waterings. So, you know, really easy care at home. Now, my second one is the Philodendron Tortum. This one's a really unique philodendron because, let me put this guy down, because it's, it's giving you like palm-like leaves. Um, you have a lot of the splits, so a lot of light can pass through it in nature. And my favorite thing about these is as they unfurl, they give you this like dance. And it gives a pink tone at the beginning that'll fade to a green. But as each of these leaves unroll, um, you just get this beautiful transition into the new leaf. So, you know, if you don't have a philodendron, I really recommend this one here. And I've seen those leaves get really large. Yes. Now, if you want them to get larger, I recommend getting it on a pole. I love these clear Rousseau poles that we have. Oh, fascinating. You fill it with moss. Sometimes I do, you know, a good aeroid mix so it's not super moisture retaining. But if you get these, if you put the plant on here, they upsize really fast. Um, and I've seen it, so thank you, Rousseau. Um, and yeah, if, if you don't put it on and you give it good light, like it can grow really compact and just full and bushy, which I really love. Yeah, it's kind of one of those funny things where you're looking at it right now and you're like, is this gonna be like a bird's nasty kind of thing? Mm. Or is it going to like grab and grow up, you know? It'll depend how you, how you have it situated. Like I have it on a shelf, so mine's actually growing out forward and down a bit, um, which I think is really gorgeous. Amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for showing yeah. and sharing some of the Thanks for favorites in the out. tropicals. We love our tropicals. Thanks for supporting Plant One On Me with your like, subscribe, and sustaining membership. Check out our online courses at homesteadbrooklyn.com when you have an opportunity. And if you're craving more outdoor gardening and DIY renovations, then check out our sister channel over at Flock Finger Lakes. See you in the next episode.